So over the last week, we've been talking a lot about the Nintendo Switch 2 because, frankly, we have some legit reports or at least reports from reliable places in Video Game Chronicle, Eurogamer, Go Nintendo, Nate the Hate, all coming together to start opening the floodgates of the Nintendo Switch 2. And they're not the only ones opening the floodgates for Nintendo Switch 2. There's one part of those reports we haven't really dove into, and I want to dive into that today. But not only that, we also potentially have Nintendo themselves giving us some information through patents on a potential new feature for how this system might control. Now, quickly, before we get into this news, I just want to say we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. And if you're really enjoying these updates and you want to stay as, as up to date on Switch 2 and Mario Wonder and the new 3D Mario game and future Zelda, the games, pretty much all things Nintendo. Why don't you go ahead and just drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and ringling that dingling so you can get notified of all of our videos. I want to get into something that was brought up, but I, I personally kind of glossed over it because I really wasn't sure what it meant, but it actually could be something quite important, both to the internal memory and storage on Switch, which we talked about, you know, the 512 potential gigabytes of that storage, and also for the cartridges. And that's because we need to go ahead and go back to this Go Nintendo article we referenced yesterday. And there's this part here where it says the device will use a new cartridge format. And this is that one thing that was really glossed over by myself because I really wasn't sure what it meant. But then as I listened to people like Nate the Hate and Modern Vintage Gamer and uh, RGT85 and then did some digging into some tech forums, I realized a few things are happening here that are really important to the future of this platform. So let's dive into what this really means by talking about NAND flash memory. Now look, the Nintendo Switch itself uses some form of ECMM memory and it could potentially switch over to NAND flash. That's obviously a discussion that is hard to know because when we hear about the internal storage of the Switch being 512 gigabytes, we really don't fully grasp what that is or what that means or what it potentially could mean in the future. It's just not something that we have a deep enough knowledge of at this point to see if they're going away from that to go with NAND flash. But there is some reasons for that. And in particular, one thing we do know about the current Switch today is that the physical cartridges of the Nintendo Switch today use what's known as 2D NAND flash. And the prices on 2D NAND flash haven't really gone down over the years. They're pretty expensive to make and obviously are limited in some ways. You guys see those super long load screens in some games that are slightly faster when you have a digital version instead installed on the internal hard drive? Yeah, that's one of the limitations is that while they're faster than discs, they're not so fast as to reducing load times in a meaningful way. But... But when we hear about the new cartridge format, some people might just go, oh, they're going to reshape the cartridge so it doesn't fit in the old Switch. Sure, that's probably going to happen. We saw that with 3DS. But what if I were to tell you that not only could we see a reshaping of the cartridge a little bit, maybe even just a notch, that they might change the entire internals of their cartridges moving forward to 3D NAND. So what does this mean? Well, we have this excellent article here that we're about to go over that will show you about 2D versus 3D NAND. Uh, and it's an educational article. This is not purely educational. And the here, here, here's the difference. Here's what we need to know about it and why 3D NAND should probably already be being used, but maybe they needed to wait for a whole new platform to do it. So 3D NAND is the latest version of NAND technology. Technology, so it's usually preferred over 2D. NAND flash storage technology uses cells stacked within the smaller chassis to give the users a small storage component with better performance. 2D NAND devices place storage cells side by side. 3D NAND actually just adds another layer and stacks cells vertically so you don't necessarily have to have modules next to each other. Now, yeah, you can still have modules next to each other, of course, but they would be much larger modules due to the verticality with that extra layer. And by storing cells within the drive's chassis, 3D NAND provides more storage at faster speeds. Now, that all sounds good. More storage, faster speeds. This is going to be more expensive, right? A 3D NAND flash storage device also provides more storage at a lower price than a 2D NAND device. In addition, the newer 3D NAND technology reduces 
power consumption and increases the speed at which a device can write data to cells. Now, write is one thing. We don't know about read speeds. That's not really covered in this article. And for the purposes of loading times, read speeds are really what matters. But if the read speeds aren't any worse, but this storage can have more of it, for cheaper with less power needed. That sounds like a go-to. And that's why I said, maybe this is also a technology they might consider for the internals. If it happens to have lower power consumption than say an EC MM memory or whatever the heck they're using inside switch right now. I don't remember those exact details and I'm sorry, I don't have them on hand at the moment, but yeah, this is clearly going to affect their uh, technology. This article basically concludes, you should basically just be using 3D NAND whenever possible. You really shouldn't worry about using any anything else other than 3D NAND. And that makes a lot of sense for future cartridges. Now, are they gonna need different pin readouts? Is, it, is this gonna mean backwards compatibility is going to end up being a problem because the way they designed this means they can't accept the older cartridges? That is something that we're not sure about, but is a distinct possibility and is something starting to come up in a lot of conversations where if there is backwards compatibility, it might only be for digital libraries, and that would probably upset some people. But also, if they're using 3D NAND, then it also makes cartridge sizes, you know, not only able to get much bigger, right? Like right now, we max out at 32. You could probably get a 64, maybe even a 128 out there with a new cartridge design, although the 128 is going to be quite expensive, still would be feasible and maybe closer to the price of what a 32 gigabyte cartridge costs now because, again, 3D NAND is cheaper. It is interesting to see that this could cause them not to have cartridge compatibility they could just put a second slot on there specifically for Switch games, and maybe they do that at launch and eliminate that with future models. We've seen this, you know, where the Wii, the, the Wii launch could take GameCube discs, but later Wii models couldn't. So it is entirely possible that they include physical support at launch and then get rid of it with new models on the line. But at this point, it, look, this 3D NAND feels like a shoe-in. It just makes too much sense. Nintendo's going to make cartridges cheaper. So your, your 4, 8, 16, and 32 gigabyte cartridges are all going to be significantly cheaper than they were this generation. And now you'll be able to get 64 and higher for maybe similar pricing to what we got for, say, the 16 and the 32. So that is really, really exciting. And obviously the fact that their lower power consumption means, hey, you know what? It does take some power to get the data off, but these will take even less power than the current disc, which will enable longer battery life when you're playing physically. So cool. That's really, really neat. But that's not the only thing we're making this video for today because we have some information from patents from Nintendo. Now, this first one uh, that we're about to go over isn't necessarily, I, I believe, for the next Switch. It could be for a future Pokemon game, however. And I figured with the Pokemon Presents happening in a couple days, maybe it's just worth glancing at this. So on this patent here, you'll see that it is an, um, a platform for Nintendo, and you see the inventors here, uh, both in Kyoto. But as we scroll down, you'll notice that this kind of starts to look like a Pokeball. Now, you guys might remember the Pokeball controller they released with Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. This feels like a more compact version. Now, again, this might not even be for the Nintendo Switch for a future Pokemon game, but it also might be. Maybe it's something that's supposed to be compatible with their new Pokemon Sleep app. I don't know. Uh, you have, a, you have a, a spot here to put a wrist strap. So to me, it, fe it feels like something. it's not something you hold occasionally. It's something that you would probably just use throughout playing Pokemon. And then you have a button here. And then you obviously have a some sort of control stick there. You have your USB-C charging. You have an on-off switch here. And yeah, this might be a reset switch or a syncing button so you can sync it to your switch. And as you see, as we go down here, this, this kind of looks like it's just going to be a controller. You see how it's held. You see how you're meant to press the one button. You have your thumb on a center. Not really a traditional control stick as you're seeing here. You're seeing like this pad here on top of a pad. Then you see the four directions. So it, it could be um, a D-pad replacement or something like that. It's hard to really tell, but it, it's not like a traditional control stick. Maybe it's meant to be a touch direction pad, but it's obviously some sort of directional control there. And again, looks very similar to how D-pads are usually set up as we're looking at all of these full breakdowns. So while this is probably not even related to Nintendo Switch 2, with it coming up, you know, this upcoming Tuesday at Pokemon Presents in the early AM, I just wanted to make sure that we 
at least show this off because this potentially could be something that's about to be announced. And again, you can clearly see this whole D-pad like module that they're working on here. So again, probably for a, a future Pokemon game, if I had to guess. But yeah, and you can see the actuation, how that works when you be pressing it in different directions and it'll push down on the various touch points there on the pad. So yeah, that's cool. But that's not what I really wanted to talk about today. Now, this is the patent that I actually wanted to spend time talking about because this is the one that could be related to Switch 2. Now, let's back up a bit. Let's back out of the patent for a moment and just briefly talk about the efficacy of what patents really represent. So Nintendo often releases patents uh, well before things come out and these patents don't necessarily mean anything, okay? Nintendo's patents often come out for things that either already exist or our ideas that they scrapped. So I'm going to warn, this could be a scrapped idea. But there are caveats to this. You remember the patents we got for Tears of the Kingdom? Well, those patents ended up showing us new features that were not shown off in Tears of the Kingdom yet. And most of those features ended up coming true. Now, there are specific parts of the, the patent that you can point to and go, oh, we can't quite do that in Tears of the Kingdom. So even those patents presented some ideas that didn't make it into the final game, but other aspects of that patent were true. And this also technically happened with the Nintendo Switch. So if you guys remember the Nintendo Switch patent back in the day, back when we were still calling it NX, and you had that screen that went around uh, the control sticks, and we had that fake leak out there where someone 3D printed a very convincing model of one. Uh, what was interesting about that patent when you dug through it is it included many things. Not only obviously that it's a handheld uh, with a screen and controls, but it, it was a USB-C. It could be technically plugged into your TV via that USB-C port, so it could be taken on the go or played on your TV. Naturally, we didn't have physical buttons, we didn't have detachable controllers, so all of that required a separate control unit to do it. But the point is, there were some basic ideas there that showed you Nintendo was leaning towards making a hybrid system that was both handheld and could be used on your TV and used USB-C, which Nintendo had never used at that point, and obviously, you know, had a system with a screen on it. And while a lot of the design terminology completely went away and they that was totally just a prototype, they still ended up releasing a device that you could hold in your hand and this time through a dock, use USB-C to use on your TV with detachable controllers. So it was one of those designs that was probably made on the way to getting to that final design of what the Nintendo Switch ultimately became. And so that is why when I say we're about to look at this patent, remember, everything in this patent might not happen, but there are aspects of it that could. And again, this does affect how you would control the system. Now, I want to know, there's going to be a lot of speculation because we aren't exactly sure how this works. It's a very interesting design. So you can see that the US, United States patent application was filed on April 3rd of 2023 with a published date. Uh, I can't remember where the published date was. Uh, the published date was something like a few days ago. I think it was August 3rd. Now, way down deeper in this, I don't know if we'll get to it today, but deeper on it notes that they originally potentially filed this like way back in 2020 and again nintendo's always working on their next system so this is an idea they've had around for a while there's on april 3rd is where they actually wanted to publish it and like lock it in they, they wanted this to get fully approved as of april which could be a sign that this is something that's going into the final design the fact that they filed it in 2020 and then in uh 2023 they're like hey can we get this damn thing approved yeah, okay so what are we talking about we got this little button like device here uh that looks very interesting it shows that there are multiple parts to it and it can move in six different directions and can spin you see this where it, oh it can spin on the z-axis it can spin on the y-axis it can spin on the x-axis so you can move it in a circular motion while moving it in a direction now that is it feels a little similar to the slide pad we had on the 3ds except obviously when you'd push the slide pad up you know to go forward or left right etc you couldn't then also spin it in that direction so that is a very interesting design and i i do see how this has the potential to become a possibly a new type of control stick and an innovation in a way that I don't think any of us were thinking about. And so keep that spinning motion in mind as we go down through the figures. So here's where you get your first look at, this sort of looks like a little bit of a traditional control stick. Now, this is obviously um, 
you know, pressed up. And this is the, uh, you're going to see in a moment, this whole thing here is what moves. But I, I do find this interesting in how this component works because if it just works like a traditional control stick, that's totally fine. But now adding extra functionality to that, including pressing down button click, right? We've been able to click in our sticks for a long time. Uh, but keep this in mind when we get to this really interesting upcoming image. And this is where, where we see what the top sort of looks like. It's probably a bit exaggerated because if you see in uh, this picture here, it doesn't quite look that wide of a circle around it. So this is probably an exaggeration just to make a point that this can move independent of this as well uh, in four directions. And this is the component that spins. This is what spins. That's why you see the arrow here. Uh, so keep this in mind as we look at this right here. So this looks like to me, mostly a traditional control stick. Now, you're seeing that it comes off of this, right? Off of this. I'm not so sure that the coming off of that is how the mechanic would work, but the way that I figure is that when you're using a control stick, you know, you press forward and it leans forward. You press back and it leans back, side and it leans side, right? So that's sort of like, hey, we're leaning forward, we're leaning backwards, but also we could slide forward. And we still have this device on top that we know can turn. So what if... You know, you could press down for a button press, but what if you pushed a control stick forward and then you could spin your thumb a little bit? And when you spin your thumb, that's an additional control that spins this top little segment here. And with that top segment spinning as a whole new input device to a traditional control stick. That to me would be a total Nintendo innovation. And if they ever brought this out, that would just be insane. Now. It's also entirely possible in looking at this, because if you remember up here, it showed this top part here can move in four directions. It doesn't have the, the six direction or eight directions. We've got two axes here and it can spin. What if in the final design, Nintendo does away with the spin because maybe it's just too mechanical and, 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 and maybe too flimsy and breaks, but they keep the four directional slide. So you tilt the control stick forward and then there's that additional thing in the middle that you could just sort of nudge in four directions for an extra four essentially inputs, button inputs, directional inputs, in addition to a single control stick. That would be quite curious on if they would do something like this. Also, it's possible that they only put this on one of the control sticks. So maybe like the left stick, you know, might be your traditional movement stick and the right stick that we're usually pointing cameras and guns and stuff with maybe has this additional fine tuned functionality to it. But we're just speculating because we don't really know what this crazy controller uh, stick design is going to be. Is it a sliding stick? What, what are we talking about? We don't really know. All of this is just explaining um, the six axis data storage and just basically the basic principles of how all of the directions and stuff can get into operation right here, the screen generation section. Like, hey, all your controls and here's what happens on the screen. And again, you're just seeing sort of a side cut view of uh, how it would be put into a controller, which by the way, one thing I like noting about this part here is look at this curve. You see this curve? Well, this is, a, it, let's say this was a vertical slice of, a con, of, of the new controller. This curve suggests better ergonomics for the new controllers. If this, nothing else, you assume back here, you're gonna have some triggers, right? You'll have your triggers back here. But when you see this curve, Nintendo might've actually made more ergonomic Joy-Cons or controllers or whatever they're working on for this thing. So in the end, what are all of my thoughts on this? I do think that obviously Nintendo is gonna go with 3D Nan. I, I don't even, I don't think it's a rumor at this point. It's cheaper, so you save money. Uh, it uses less power consumption. You get more in a very similar size package. Yeah, duh. They're clearly going to use 3D NAND for their new cartridges, which unfortunately could mean could, I'm not 100% sure, that they need a different pin layout. And with a different pin layout, that potentially might mean you can't just do a 3DS to DS situation where you plug in your DS cartridges in the same slot. Now, maybe that's a, 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 a non-story. Maybe they don't have to change the pin layout because you're just changing the chip that goes on the board and you can use the same pin layout and then they'll just have a little notch or something like that to make it so you can't put it into your Nintendo Switch and you move on with your day. So that is obviously entirely possible that you could still have that backwards compatibility, but unfortunately, 
unfortunately, I don't know enough about if you need to change pin layouts for this new style of NAND flash. And if you do, that to me puts some doubt at least in Nintendo supporting physical uh, backwards compatibility. But that's obviously a conversation for another day. I feel like we're going to hear a lot more about the physical uh, backwards compatibility and just backwards compatibility in general uh, after Gamescom. I, I think once developers get together and they corroborate their information, we're going we're gonna to start hearing if uh, backwards compatibility is truly a thing physically and digitally. But then when we talk about this new patent on the controls, again, it could be nothing and this could be an entirely scrapped idea, but it also could be something or there could be aspects of this that make it into the final design, even if the entire patent doesn't. And again, I really do love that image. It shows we might have some more ergonomics to this. Like, you know, look, this is a very sharp cutoff. That's not what this one looked like. This one had more of a curve to it, a more of a curve, which feels a lot more ergonomic than what we have here, where right now, you know, my hand right here doesn't even feel the curve, you know, because it's too separated from it. So if there's a nice little curve here that you can sort of feel with the bottom of your hand, it just makes holding things more comfortable. So while they might not still be the most comfortable controls, it would represent a redesign that would show, hey, we do have a new type of Joy-Con. I wish the update I had for you is that Nintendo was going to use hall sensors for the control sticks that would have been really the update i'd like to see but uh anyways that's not what that patent says i actually read all of that billion the, like that the bunch of text you saw i read all of it just to see if hall sensing was in there anywhere and it's not so anyways guys you guys let me know what you think about this patent what you think about the 3d nan storage if it, it's going to impact maybe some of you guys are more knowledgeable and you want to educate me on if they'd have to change pin layouts because that would affect the ability to use old cartridges. I don't know. All I know is I want to thank you guys for being here and I'll catch you in the next video.